So let's take a simple example and kind of pull all this together. When we walk from the left, it's called a left-hand limit. It's very simple to understand. Basically, if it's a left-hand limit, what you say is the limit of f of x is equal to l as x approaches a, but to signify that you're walking from the left, like going this way, you put a little minus sign. It's like a little exponent right above the, what you're approaching. And you put a little minus sign. And all that means is a mental reminder telling you that as I'm walking toward the, the uh, value of A to find what the limit is, I'm walking from the left, okay? So this is something I'll kind of circle. That's what that means. All right, now you might guess then that a right-hand limit is very similar. A right-hand limit is very similar. It's, a, it's basically the same sort of thing, but you're walking from the other side. So you might have the limit of f of x is going to be some limit l. x approaching a, but now I'm not walking this way. I'm walking from the right-hand side, so I put a little plus sign there. So you need to make sure you understand what that is. If you ever see a plus, a little plus or a little minus sign there, it's basically just telling you which way you walk. So the way I remember it is if you see a plus sign there, it's on the kind of on the right-hand side walking towards the value that I care about. If you see a negative sign, it's walking from the left. So if you think about like a coordinate system with x, x being negative this way and positive to the right, if you see a little positive side, you're kind of walking from that way, and if you see a negative sign, you're walking from the opposite direction. So in pictures, what this might look like for a left-hand limit, a real simple left-hand limit, like nothing fancy or anything, if you have x and f of x, Let's say the function that I'm actually interested in looks something like this. And if I'm approaching, let's say, let's say I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the function x squared, because this is a parabola, what is that going to equal? Well, if this is 1 and this is 2, okay, then what's going to happen? Well, the limit, I'm going to be walking from the left towards the value 2. I'm going to find what this value is over here. And you know that 2 squared is 4, so this value here is 4, so this value here is 4. So basically, if you walk from the left, meaning from this direction going that way, if you made a table of values, maybe you'd start at 0, and then 1, and then 1 and a half, 1.9, 1 1.9999, 1 1.9999, you're walking from that direction, you're going to see that the limit is going to approach 4. Okay, now we'll draw a picture of what happens over here, and it's very similar. If this is x and this is f of x, if I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, that's what the plus means, of x squared, what's that going to be equal? Well, the x squared curve is a parabola like that. Here's 1, here's 2. But now the limit's a little bit differently. I'm still trying to approach this point, but I'm coming from the right-hand side. That's what this means. So I might start at 4, and then 3, you know, and then 2.5, and, and then 2.1, and 2.0001, and 2.0000001, and eventually I get really, 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 really close, and I will see from my table that I'm also going to approach a value of 4, because 2 squared is 4. Now at this point, you might look at this, and you might say, um, well, who cares about this? I mean, this is exactly what we were doing before. I'm just approaching from the left, I'm approaching from the right, but I got the same answer in both cases, so why are we even talking about this? Okay, because what it's basically saying, and what I haven't really told you yet, okay, we got the same answer in both cases, same answer, because, and I'll capitalize it, because f of x x squared, this function is smooth at x is equal to 2. So basically, the reason we got the answer in both cases when you approach from the left or approach from the right is precisely because this specific function we're investigating is a smooth function. Another word for that is a continuous function. We'll talk more about that later, at the point of interest. If there was some kind of weird discontinuity at this point, which we'll talk about here in just a minute when I solve another problem for you, then the limit from the left and the limit from the right may not be the same, okay? So what you can really learn from this 
See, before, all we have ever talked about before this lesson is the limit. What's the limit? What's the limit? What's the limit? Well, really, all of the other limits that we've studied up until this point, they're what you call two-sided limits. That means when you, when you have a limit without a plus or a minus here, it's implied that you can approach from either direction. Okay? So what we can learn from this kind of example and kind of thinking about what other kind of functions we can put in there is that the two-sided limit meaning from the, the, the general form of a limit that we've been studying in all these problems, it only exists if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit end up in the same number. Basically, if you get the same number when you approach from the left or you approach from the right, the right then we say that the two-handed limit, the ones that we've been doing all up until this time, it exists only in that case. So this is a theorem, which I will write down. You'll see in your book somewhere, the limit which we write as x approaching a, no plus, no minus, just approaching a of f of x exists if and only if the following thing is true. That thing that we have been doing all up until this point, which we have, now you know is called a two-sided limit, it only exists if the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x. Okay. In other words, if the two sides of these guys uh, approaching from either direction give you the same answer, then, and I should say this is L, okay, some limit L, then the conclusion is that the limit as x approaches a, which we're now calling a two-sided limit of f of x, is also equal to l. Okay, so basically what it's basically telling you, it's just kind of a common sense thing that you can see now that I've drawn the picture, but if I didn't have the picture, you may not have understood what this is trying to tell you. It's a very simple concept. It's basically saying, take an arbitrary function, you want to find the limit at this point. Now you know that all the limits that we've been uh, basically talking about to, to this point, we call them two-sided limits. And those limits, they only exist if you approach from the left and you get a number, and if you approach from the right and you get the same number. And if you approach from the left and the right and you meet in the middle and you get the same answer for the limit, then we say that the two-sided limit is just equal to you know, what you get if, is if you approach from the left and the right. And that's really what I've been implying this whole time, because when I've been writing the tables, I've been sometimes approaching from the left, sometimes I've been approaching from the right. I didn't want to clutter it all up with telling you about left-hand, right-hand limits, because then you're like, well, what does that matter? Well, the bottom line is most of the functions that we've been studying up until this point, most all, almost all of them have been continuous and smooth at the point of interest. So if you have a smooth function, it's not going to matter if you come from the left or if you come from the right because, um, because of that. So this is how you determine if a limit exists at a point. It only exists at a point if you approach from the left and get the same exact answer as if you approach from the right. If you get different answers for these limits, and you'll see an example of that in just a second, then we say the two-sided limit does not exist. All we can then say is the limit from the left is different than the limit from the right. So let me give you an example of a couple of cases. One case, I'll give you an example of when the two-sided limit exists and one when it doesn't exist. So f of x, here's when you start getting into weird piecewise defined functions. So this function is 2x plus 1 when x is less than 2 and x plus 3 when x is greater than 2. So this is what you call a piecewise defined function. What it basically means is that when x is less than 2, this other thing doesn't even exist. The function is this. And when x is greater than 2, only this part of the function is dominant. So there's really like two functions here on the board. So it's kind of like two separate things. One thing is going on uh, in a different region than the other. We call this thing called a piecewise defined function. Now what we want to find in this particular problem is what is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x? What is that? Notice that 2 is the magic number where the breakpoint happens. Also notice there's no equal signs under here, so this is less than 2 and greater than 2. So this function is not even defined at 2. Okay, It's not even defined at x is exactly equal to 2. It's just defined infinitely close to 2 on, the, you know, on either side, but it's just not defined exactly at 2. So if you ever have a problem where it's asking you what is, uh, does this limit exist or what is this limit, and you see this piecewise defined function, you automatically know that this is not smooth, okay, or it's not continuous anyway. 
So then what you do is you try to find the limit from the left. So we'll approach um, two, but we'll now approach it only from the left. And because this function is valid when x is less than two, we have to use this function when we evaluate this limit. Because we're approaching from values less than two. So this function is the one that applies. Now, this is a very well-behaved function in this region, so I can just plug in the value of two, and I will get two times two plus one, which is equal to five. So the limit I get when I approach from the left is actually equal to five. Now what we do is we'll try to approach from the other direction. So we'll take the limit as x approaches two from the right-hand side. But now, since we're approaching from values bigger than two, we have to use the second function because this is the one that's valid there. So x plus three. Again, this is a very well-behaved function in this region, so we can just plug in the value of two. And again, we get five. So notice that in this case, even though the function looked really weird and really kind of just odd, it's piecewise, defined function, okay? Doesn't look very smooth just from the a general glance. It actually turns out that we approach the exact same value for the limit whether or not we approach from the left or the right. So what you conclude from that, okay, is now you conclude because of this is true, the limit, which is now known as the two-sided limit of this function, is equal to five. Okay, it's equal to five because we approach from the left, we approach from the right, we get exactly the same thing. Now you might be wondering, this is such a weird example, what does this actually look like? Okay, well, we can draw a little picture of that. So here we go, this is x and this is f of x. Okay, the magic number that we, we know is a really weird number occurs at x is equal to two, okay? And we know that the number five is important here somewhere. It turns out that if you plot this guy, what you're gonna get is something that's gonna look, let me see here, it's gonna look kinda of like this. In the region when x is less than two, you're gonna be plotting this line, okay? But in the region when x is greater than two, you're gonna be plotting this line. So we're gonna get really close and now it's a more shallow line. This is not a straight line. This line is slightly cocked a little bit down, shallower, and this one is a little bit steeper. And notice if you can kinda of get really close in the video, these are not connected. Okay, when you go up here and you see at the point x is equal to two, there is nothing there, there's no dot. That's because these functions are, no, are not defined exactly at x is equal to two. So because it's not defined there, literally there's, there's simply a hole in the graph. So, uh, and this is a good example of when this function is not continuous, but the limit still does exist because when we approach from the left, we get two, because we're getting infinitely close to this value and we approach from the right, we also get the same value of two. We get infinitely close to two from the right-hand side. So the limit is five in both of these cases, and that's why we circled the answer of five here, okay? So this is an example of, even if the graph is discontinuous at a point, you can still have the limit if you have a very special case. Obviously, this is a really special case. Now, let's look at a different problem. And this one will um, be very interesting as well. What if we have a function that's defined as follows. That the function is just simply zero when x is less than zero, but the function jumps to one when x is greater than or equal to zero. Now, first thing you notice is this is different because in the previous function, this function was not even defined at x is equal to two. In this case, at the break point, this function is defined at x is equal to zero and its value is one when x is greater than or equal to zero. So if we wanted to draw a picture of this, what we would be drawing is the following. Here's x, here's f of x, and basically what we're going to find is that the magic breakpoint is at zero right here, and when we have values greater than zero, including zero, we have a value of one. So we put a dot here, and our line continues on this way. So for values greater than zero, the function is one, and we put a dot here signifying that e including the value of zero, it's also equal to that point. But for values less than zero, but not including zero, okay, so I'll get really close to that, and I'll just kind of come left here with the blue pen, okay, because the value is zero for all values less than, like that. So every single point along x in the domain is included in here. All values less than zero, that's the blue line. All values greater than or equal to zero is included in the purple line. So the question is, does the limit as x approach zero of f of x exist? And if so, what is it? So the way you figure this out 
is you approach from the left and you approach from the right. So the limit as x approaches zero from the left of the function, but now we know that when we're approaching from the left, all values of x are less than zero. So basically the function is zero in that region. And you know from before, the limit of a constant, it's just a flat line, so it's just basically equal to the number. And that's what we get for that, okay? And then we have, let's switch colors, approaching from the right, the limit as x approaches zero from the right-hand side means we're coming from this direction from values of x that are greater than zero. And so the value of function that we care about there is just one. And so we take the limit here, it's a, again, it's a constant number, it's just equal to one. So basically, when we approach this function from the left, we get zero. When we approach it from the right, the limit that we get is one. So those two are definitely not the same. We approach from the left, we approach from the right, we, right, we get totally different answers. But this kind of makes sense. If you walk from the right and get infinitely close, you're going to observe a value of one. If you walk from the left, you're going to get infinitely close and you're going to observe a value of zero because this function never ever moves off of zero no matter how close you get. So you get infinitely close, you still never get up here when you're walking from the left hand side. So you get different answers. So because you get different answers, what you have learned is that the limit of x approaching zero, which we now know to be called the two-sided limit, does not exist. And this is what you circle on your test. It's just simple as that. You just say it doesn't exist. So basically, either the limit exists or the limit doesn't. What the theorem says is that if you approach from the left and you approach from the right, and you get the same answer, then the limit, the two-sided limit, exists for that function and it's equal to L. If you approach from the left and you approach from the right and you get something other than something that, the two answers that don't mesh or don't match, then the limit does not exist. The two-sided limit doesn't exist. We can still say that the limit of this function from the left exists, and we can still say that the limit of this function from the right also exists, but what we can't say is that the two-sided limit exists because it doesn't. Because you look at it and going, you're getting different answers depending on which way you look at it. I will give you a hint. This left hand, right hand stuff, it only really comes into play when you have really weird functions like this. This is not a smooth and continuous function of any sort. Uh, and in nature, a lot of times our functions are smooth and continuous, so you don't run into it too much. But that is the purpose of really understanding left and right hand limits is because of this. So um, make sure you understand what I'm talking about. We're going to work some additional problems and limits here using some of these uh, concepts that we learn. So follow me on to the next section and we'll get some additional practice. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.